Never mind. You don't need any instruction. I'm in a series on love, and, and it, really this message is about increasing our love for Jesus. It's entitled, I Gave Up Lent for Lent. The first service didn't chuckle either, but that's okay. I gave up Lent for Lent. I, I thought it was a creative title the Lord gave me, and, and so um, I struggle with titles for sermons. I'd like you to have uh, turn in your Bibles to a couple of places that I'm going to read from that sets the stage uh, for this special, special message. Uh, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, uh, Romans 12, 1, Hebrews 13, verse 16. Luke chapter 4, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Now, if you notice in verse 1, he was led by the Spirit. This is, this is a leading of the Spirit thing. He was led of the Spirit for 40 days into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry led by the Spirit to go to the wilderness to fast, to give up, to sacrifice, to depend upon the Father, to be tempted by the devil in his human weakness, yet defeating the devil in all power and in all glory. And then Romans 12, chapter 1, I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your life, your bodies, everything about you, I'm paraphrasing, as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, uh, uh, verse 15, we sang that old chorus in the first service. Bring sacrifice of praise in the house of the Lord. Uh, if that's new to you, if that's new to you, that, that's so, such an old chorus, but we sang in the first service. Through him, let us continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices. You made a sacrifice to be here today. You, we received two offerings today. Those were sacrifices. Uh, such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So this morning, in this, in this message uh, series on love, I'm going to talk about Lent. I don't think I've ever preached a sermon or really focused my heart and, and my leadership on Lent. And maybe I'll get into that later of why, why or why not. But I'm going to talk about Lent. And I'm reminded of the old joke that gets me into this sermon. Of the priest that was, the Catholic priest that was walking home, uh, walking back to his church or the rectory. And his back was turned to a robber. And the robber came up behind him and stuck a gun in his back and said, your money or your life. Did not know as a Catholic priest, and the priest turned around and he saw the white collar, and the priest had his hands raised and he pulled out a candy bar, and and the robber goes, "I didn't know you were a priest," and and the priest says, "That's okay, my son." He pulled out a he pulled out a candy bar and he said, "Could I offer you a candy bar?" And the robber goes, "No, I gave up candy for Lent." <laughs> now, now I love that joke because. Perhaps it triggers something in your mind. That Lent, and we'll get into what Lent is. That Lent is a season for some people that you might judge as being a time of pretense or hypocrisy. That they sin all the other days of the years, but, but as if we didn't. And, but for Lent, they really, they really look spiritual and religious. Or maybe you're here today... And the idea of Lent, even that word is a new word to you, and even the season of Lent is, is very vague to you. Like, it's what Catholics do, it's what Lutherans do, it's what Presbyterians do, but most other Protestant churches include, say, well, we don't, we don't do that, but what is it? And so this morning, I'm going to walk you through what, why, and how. If you can walk with me, and, and some of you are going, yeah, I vaguely know something about Lent from some background or tradition. And some of you are here maybe going, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. That's, so I'm trying to go down to ground zero here, and I want to talk about Lent 
and then the whys and the hows. And, and in case you don't get this during the message, I'm going to invite you to consider Lenten season as a time in your journey with Jesus Christ leading up to Easter. So we're going to start with this. What is Lent? What on earth is it? What, what I mean, really, Pastor? Is, it, is that word even in the Bible? No, it's not in the Bible. Neither is the word Trinity. Did you know that? Though the Trinity is, is something I, and you, I would suggest you wholeheartedly believe in, but the actual word is not in the Bible. The theological construct is. Lent is not in the Bible in terms of the actual word, but the idea, it's based upon, the word Lent simply is an old word. It's an old Latin word. It comes from an old Latin derivative that means spring season. means spring season. But it was adopted to commemorate the 40 days of Jesus, it means the 40 days leading up to Holy Saturday. I don't call Saturday holy, but in certain traditions they call Holy Saturday. It's 40 days. Lent is 40 days beginning on this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, leading up to Easter. And it is to commemorate the 40 days of Jesus in the wilderness, where he was led of the Spirit, Luke 1. Luke 4, 1 through 3, where Jesus was led of the Spirit to fast for 40 days in the wilderness. Our secretary, Karen, did a lot of research for me on this, and, and, and I just want to share some of the research. I, I was curious about 40 days, 40 days. What was interesting, when you trace 40 days in the Bible, God sent the rain during Noah's flood, 40 days and 40 nights. Moses spent 40 days on Mount Sinai. Elijah walked in the strength of the Lord 40 days to Mount Horeb. Jonah called on the people of Nineveh, to re gave him 40 days to repent. Um, the children of Israel were in, the, were in the wilderness 40 years, so it's interesting. Uh, Jesus spent 40 days in a fulfillment of something. Without food, we presume he had water, but he spent 40 days without food in the wilderness. I have a sense it was to fulfill something. It was to enact something. Uh, it was to complete something, but it was 40 days. I know Rick Warren wrote that book, 40 Days of Purpose. Um, I didn't read that particular book, but there's something about 40 days. And so Lent was adopted in the church calendar. Whoever came up with the church calendar centuries ago was adopted to commemorate the 40 days leading up to Saturday. If you don't count the Sundays, which in many traditions they don't count the Sundays, so if you start on Ash Wednesday, March 6th, I did it in my little pocket calendar, and you don't count the Sundays, you're going to arrive at 40 days on Saturday before Easter. Um, it is to commemorate the 40 days of Jesus fasting in the wilderness. So, Lent has always been associated with sacrifice and fasting because that's what Jesus did in the wilderness. He sacrificed food. He gave up food. So Lent has traditionally, and we'll get into it, we'll, we'll get into it later in the message, um, it has been associated with giving up something, sacrifice or fasting uh, for the 40 days. Now, this Wednesday, let me give you a couple of dates. This Wednesday is called Ash Wednesday right? It's called Ash Wednesday. So on a billboard, I got a kick out of this. Lent is coming. Get your ash in church. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this Wednesday. Um, is, and, and I work out with a person sometimes. Uh, she might show up. She goes to St. Thomas, and, and she always has the ashes. If, if she's there Wednesday morning, she went to their early morning service. And she'll probably come with ashes on her forehead. And that's where that tradition comes from, Ash Wednesday. How many of you know what Mardi Gras stands for? No, it doesn't stand for party time. That's, it gets associated with that in New Orleans. Mardi Gras simply means Fat Tuesday. I asked an Episcopalian priest one time, why do you folks have a pancake supper on Tuesday before Ash Wednesday? I was curious. And he said, don't you know? It's Fat Tuesday. 
It's where we load up on carbohydrates because we're going to fast the next 40 days from Ash Wednesday. Yeah, right, you're going to fast, you know. But, but that's in certain traditions. Fat Tuesday is the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, and that's where the whole stuff of Mardi Gras, that's what the word Mardi Gras stands for, Fat Tuesday. And, and, and so it's to mark that we're going to really eat because beginning on Ash Wednesday, we won't have any more pancakes, right? So in the beginning, after the first service, somebody had two cookies. And I said, hey, Lent is coming. After hearing the message on Lent, he goes, well, this is still Fat Sunday. <laughs> Lent is coming, get your ash in church. So that's where Lent comes from, 40 days of Jesus sacrificing. Um, it's been a tradition, and, and that's where Ash Wednesday starts Wednesday, March six. Having said all of that, I'm trying to give you a foundation of what is Lent, where did it come from. If you get our church newsletter, you read something probably, hopefully, about that in there. The next question is, why focus on this practice? Why? If you're like me, you have lost things in your house. How many have lost things in your house? And, and you can't find it. I've lost two things in the last week. I can't find it. I have a sense that's the way it is with Lent. It gets lost in the why. Why do we do it? Why would we even do it? Why do some churches do it and others it's like, why? Uh, so I want to debate this with you for just a moment, and we're going to talk about some whys of Lent. Uh, the first debatable question is, is this a man-made tradition or a spiritual discipline? Is it, I mean, let's just take the negative path for a moment. Is this just a negative, uh, uh, a man-made tradition? Somebody made it up so that we get into silly rituals and observe seasons and things that have no bearing on our life whatsoever. You could take that route. You could interpret this as a man-made tradition that we should have nothing to do with. And if, if it's just legalism, if it's just a mechanical ritual thing, um, you could go down that path. I'm going to suggest to you to back up a little bit. I'm going to suggest to you to say, whoa, on that one. And, and maybe think about it as a spiritual discipline. As Jesus was led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, to go into the wilderness for 40 days to fast. Was that a legalism for him? No. It was a fulfillment. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about fasting for 40 days. We'll get into all that in just a moment. What I want to get into is a spiritual discipline. I'm going to suggest to you that you see a Lenten season in your life in three scriptural things. Number one is 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, that you see it as imitating Christ. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. One of the greatest goals of life is simply to imitate Christ. There's nothing wrong with doing the things that Jesus did to imitate him and to honor him. I want to suggest, secondly, that you see this in light of Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto man. If you do a Lenten season just because the pastor suggests that you should, you're doing it unto man. If you're doing it uh, from the Holy Spirit and, and what Jesus wants you to do, you're doing it as unto him. I want you to see that in that light, and I want you to see it in this light. Hebrews 13, 16. Whatever sacrifices you make, whatever good you share, are pleasing to God. So I'm going to suggest that a Lenten focus in whatever we do in Lent, done with the right heart, the right attitude, can be so pleasing to God. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to talk about uh, three reasons why, and, and I think these get lost. I think these get lost, like things get lost in our home. Here's the first most important reason of the, because if you don't get the why, the what of Lent will be irrelevant if you don't understand the why in your life. Number one is, oh, there we go. There, there's a great spiritual prayer. Father, help me see this. And I wanted, I wanted you to, I forgot it was on my slides. Help me to see this as a, this holy season of Lent as a time of spiritual renewal. See, there's spiritual discipline rather than a time of just going on a hunger strike <laughs> or deprivation. I'm going to give up golf. I'll talk about that in a moment. 
motivate me to reach a new level of experiencing your grace. I'm going to suggest if you take this approach, a season of Lent will be a powerful time in your life. But you can get lost in why you do things. I told the first service, remember that old story about the, the young mother that was uh, making a ham and her young daughter was watching her? And, and the young mother cut off the end of the ham before she put it in the pan and put it in the oven. And the young, young daughter says, why do you cut off the end of the ham before you put it in the oven? And the mother goes, I guess I don't know why. That's what mom always used to do. So mom was still living and she called up mom. Mom, why did you cut off the end of the ham before you put it in the oven? She goes, well, because that's what my mother did. And so they called up great-grandmother, who was still living. Why did you cut off the end of the ham? Oh, so that's easy. My pans were too short. See, <laughs> people lose, we all lose the why. Why do we do things? Why do we have communion once a month? Because Jesus said, and Paul said, as often as you do this, as often as you do this. So we lose the why of a Lenten focus. So number one. Why? I'm going to give you three whys. Number one is simply to honor Jesus. If you don't get this one, you don't get it. It's as simple as that. If you don't get this one, we are not celebrating a season. We are not celebrating a tradition. We are celebrating our living Savior who fasted, who gave up his life for us. We are honoring Jesus. As Mary, remember the gospel story where Mary took that I think it was about $10,000 worth of oil and poured it, sacrificed it. That was perhaps her life savings, poured it over Jesus. And, and the disciples go, that money could have been used for the poor. And you know what? It could have been. But Jesus said, what she has done has been a great service. Leave her alone. She did what she could. She did that to honor Jesus. So I'm going to suggest... Whatever you do in Lent, and we'll talk about that more specifically in a moment, um, whatever you do, the why is I'm honoring Jesus. I want to do something special for him during this season. I want to give up something special for him. I just want to honor him. you got to get this one in your heart. It is not because the pastor said so. It's not because you get a newsletter saying, celebrate Lent this year. It, it is not because we're trying to follow a man-made tradition. It's got to be in your heart. It's got to be in your spirit. I want to honor my Lord and my Savior. So in my pocket is this, uh, it, it looks like a trinket to you, but this is a special gift to me. Um, when I was growing up in Eastern Oregon, uh, we grew up near Pendleton, Oregon. Have you ever heard of the Pendleton Roundup? And um, there was a special uh, a couple that worked for my folks on the farm, and they were part of the Umatilla tribe. And the story goes is that when Nancy, when I was born, when I was, when I was just a little, little, little guy, little, you know, like, like I just, I, I miss, I miss my hugs today from Jamila. Uh, okay, so when I was Jamila's size, the story was Nancy, Nancy, this Native American lady, always wanted to kidnap me and take me uh, back to where they lived, and and so I was kind of her her prize and so forth, and so for my high school graduation. She made this for me. She made this for me. Now, I still can't get it around my waist yet. I'm working on it. You got to know something about Nancy Knoyer. Nancy was, um, for the Pendleton Roundup, they had this wonderful Native American pageant. And, and all of the outfits of the princesses and, and the young men was beadwork. And she did all of the beadwork. She, in, the, in, the, in her day, in her day, in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, I, I don't know when they passed away, but she did all the handmade beadwork, and she did this for my high school graduation. So you notice, you notice where it came from? It came from my pocket. I did not even put it in the pew, not that I don't trust you. I don't want to forget it here. <laughs> and, and ended up in the lost and found. It's standing in my pocket because she did it to honor me. And I think of the sacrifice of time, the time, Maybe it was easy for her, but she put time into this. She put effort into it. She put love into it. That's what I'm suggesting.
that's the reason for Lent. You put time, you put effort, you put love, you put purpose into it. Number two, when I think of Lent and the why of Lent, the why of Lent, it's this, to do something sacrificially. Have we forgotten? Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. Have we forgotten that in our culture? We've forgotten that in this church, to do something sacrificially. So let, let me just give you some examples of sacrifice. You came here today. That was a sacrifice. It really was. On a day like today, <laughs> you sacrificed to come all the way from Hawaii just to be here today. And I know that. <laughs> We, I'm teasing you. We received offerings. That's a sacrifice. So many volunteers of our community sacrifice three hours of sleep every night, and some cases six hours of sleep, to stay awake and watch over people sleeping in churches. That's a sacrifice in the backyard project. So I want to suggest that Lent is obviously to do something sacrificial, that costs you something, not monetarily, but maybe sleep, maybe, maybe your time, maybe your energy, maybe your focus. Because to me, since Lent is always associated with sacrifice, Jesus sacrificing in the wilderness, obviously sacrificing his life, um, that Lent is to do something sacrificially. So I love this cartoon. This year for Lent, I'm just giving up. <laughs> At least he's got the phrase down, I'm giving up. Um, and because and, that is a part of a Lenten thing is what is it that I could give up and sacrifice in my life? Third purpose of Lent would be this, to experience more of his passion, to experience more of him, experience more of a depth in your soul than you have ever experienced before. And you can, you can kick back on that and say, well, don't, aren't we supposed to do that every day? Yes, but it's my, it's my humble opinion that we get so distracted in our culture and in our journey with Christ that sometimes we need special seasons to refocus and renew us and kind of re-energize us about his passion. And I don't know, I'm kind of coming, maybe I'm getting older, wiser, more mature, I don't know. I'm coming to realize that maybe Lent is that built-in rhythm of life that could help us refocus more of his passion. Now, let, let, me be, let me be the angel advocate here. I'm not the devil's advocate. I just want to be an angelic advocate. So I ran across this, this thing. Here's the thing, in Lent. Okay, if I give up something, well, will that mean I get closer to God? I believe I'm getting closer to God by spending a few weeks not eating M&Ms. <laughs> I love it. Is that what I'm suggesting? No. Just because you give up something, be it chocolate, candy, your favorite TV program, um, doesn't mean you're going to automatically get closer to God. That, so that's why I love that cartoon. Because I think that's in people's minds. If I just give up one hour of TV a week or a day, or I give up chocolate, um, I just, I'll just, I'll, I'll see visions. <laughs> it, it, Trust me, that won't come from not having chocolate. Um, it may be a blessing of God, but... So I want to debate this. You may give up M&Ms for Lent. That might be something the Lord puts on your heart. So that could be true if by prayer, by purpose, by an intentional choice, you are submitting that to Jesus and saying, I want to give this up during Lent and I want to do something special. Uh, you might be drawn closer to the Lord. So I don't want to put M&Ms down. I don't want to put that down. You may give up something as simple as um, instant coffee. I'll talk about that later. Uh, you may give up something as simple as M&Ms, and it won't automatically get you closer to God. But I believe with prayer, purpose, attitude, um, the Lord said, that's what you're giving up. Amen. I'll receive that if that's a step in, in the right direction. Okay? We'll talk about that later. But I want to debate this because I think that cartoon spoke to me. And I wanted to speak to you that just giving up something isn't going to actually put you in the third heaven. But I believe with prayer and intention of truly wanting to honor Jesus, it may be as simple as M&M's. Um, so, 
Those are the three whys. I think it's important to understand the why, to honor Jesus, to do something sacrificial, and, and to experience more of his passion during the Lenten season, to celebrate Easter, that I walked a little bit and sacrificed this Lenten season. Okay, here's one. Husband and wife don't like each other. She says, why don't you give up breathing for Lent? <laughs> I just got a kick out of that. Uh, you can go online and get a lot of things. Why don't you give up breathing for Lent? Uh, there was a great cartoon that said, uh, Al never got it when he thought about giving up work for Lent. <laughs> so don't give up your job for Lent. Um, we're going to talk now about the how could we practice Lent. I want to spend the majority of my time here talking about how could you practice Lent in your life. I'm going to give you five B's, five B's. Number one is simply be open to his voice. I want to camp on this one because part of walking in this thing is to be open to what Jesus Christ says to you. Not what the pastor suggests. Not what that church down the street is doing for Lent. But what is it? What would the Lord say to you? This is your journey with him. What would the Lord say to you? That you need to give up or to add to your life something special during the season of Lent. So uh, what should? let's just start with this one. What should I give up? So just to kind of stir your mind a little bit, just to, I, just to kind of get some creative juices going, I found this online. A lot, of, a lot of possibilities there. Twitter, sharing, chocolate, soda, fast food, Facebook, Lent, sex, alcohol, uh, social networking, meat. Uh, there are things on there that are too small to see uh, that shouldn't even be there to give up in the first place. <laughs> really, they shouldn't, but, but they're on there. Um, what would it be in your life to give up? Uh, this is where I want you to be thinking and praying. You have till Ash Wednesday to figure it out. <laughs> you have till, you have some time to think and pray. Lord, what would it be that during this season of Lent, I could give up? Now, here's what I like. Um, uh, Steve Backlund, one of the pastors at Bethel Church in Reading, is starting on Wednesday a negativity fast. I love it. I love it. You can go online, ignitinghopeministries.org, Igniting Hope Ministries. Um, I listen to his podcast a lot, and they're starting on Ash Wednesday, a negativity fast, where they are encouraging people, their church, huge church, mega church like Faith Chapel, to give up negative words, complaining, resentments, profanity. Uh, think, think about one word that comes to your mind, and you could say during Lent, I'm going to give that up. Maybe you're here today, and you have gotten in a habit of using the F word. Or the D word. Or the S word. It's just become a habit in your life. And maybe during Lent, you say, I want to, I just, I want to sacrifice that. Or maybe you're here today, and, and you're going, I complain all the time. If it's not about the heat in Hawaii, it's the, no, I'm just kidding. I just complain all the time. So maybe during Lent, you're going to say, I'm going to stop complaining. And I am going to, st I'm going to add to my vocabulary every day thanksgivings. See, you're, you're sacrificing one thing, complaining, to add to your life thanksgivings. Maybe, maybe you're going to say, I'm going to give up watching Blue Bloods every Friday night. I'm going to, I'm going to give up one hour of TV every, every day. And, and with that hour, I'm going to pray and read Scripture. See, you're swapping one positive, one negative for one positive. I'm, I'm kind of trying to encourage you to, to ask the Lord, what would it be that I could give up in the next 40 days? You've got to listen to his voice. And then, and then what should I do that's special? What could I do that's special? Maybe you're going to take your extra coffee money and, and build a small offering for the next 40 days, and you're going to give it to somebody that's in need of it. Maybe you know, See, some churches do the collecting of alms as a special thing in Lent. Um, maybe you're going to write a thank you card to, every to a person every day. For 40 days, you're going to send out 40 cards. 
You're going to start on Ash Wednesday. You're going to give a special. You're going to write a special note, not an email, not a text, not a not a Facebook post. Uh, you're going to actually handwrite a note. <laughs> Good old fashioned handwriting. You're going to write a note to 40 different people every day. That could be something special for Lamb. I'm just trying to stir your thinking because you've got to listen to his voice. And you're saying, well, if I just listen, why am I listening to you, Pastor? So I'm just trying to stir your thinking about what could be endless possibilities of listening to his voice about giving up or adding something special in honoring him. So I got a kick out of this cartoon, the Lenten sweet shop, all you can't eat. <laughs> Sometimes it's how we approach that. Uh, maybe, maybe you are going to give up desserts. Okay, cool. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Well, that gets me to the, the second B. Be led by the Spirit, not by guilt. One of the worst things that can happen in a message like this, or, or a feeling of what I need to do, is that you become mechanical and that you become legalistic. You know, I got to do Lent because the pastor is promoting it. That's legalism. It's got to be led of the Spirit in your heart and in your life. I got a kick out of this cartoon. I'm giving up TV for Lent, except for the programming I recorded before Lent. <laughs> That's the kind of legalism we get into. Um, and, and here's what could happen. Let's say, let's say that I'm going to give up desserts for Lent. And then you get invited, and you're going good for a week. Man, I can't believe I've given up every dessert thing that there is. And I want to do this to you, Lord. Sounds simple, but, but maybe that's a step for people. And then you get invited out, and you, you eat that cherry pie, and then you feel guilty for the next five days because you broke your vow. Well, don't go there. Just say, okay, I had a dessert. Um, um, I'll just start again. You, you got to be promoted. You got you to speak to yourself about grace, about process, not perfection. So here's what you don't want. You don't want I have to. In your life and in my life, I do not want you to approach this as I have to do this. What you want is I get to. I want to. That's the spirit talking to you. If it's legalism, if it's guilt, it will be, I have to, and I feel like a failure because I blew my vow, and I said I was going to give up chocolate, and, and those crazy M&Ms just speak to me. And, and so, so you've, you've got to approach this by the Spirit leading you. And, and maybe, maybe you're here today, because I don't know everybody's background, and you come from a, maybe a Catholic background or a Lutheran background. And so the idea of Lent to you is like, I'm going to suggest to you, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And that's true with any biblical thing. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater on things. Because it, it has richness in it if it was approached right. So you always want to not react to things, but to be led of the Spirit. So that's the second B. Be led by the Spirit. Be led by His voice. Third B. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, here's a good one about guilt. I gave up Dr. Pepper for Lent made it for two hours. I love it. See, you don't want to white knuckle this thing. I did it. See, it's not you doing it. It's the Spirit giving you power and strength, even if you just give up M&Ms. Man, that's a huge struggle for you. It's the Spirit leading you to do that. I love that cartoon, though. Don't be like that. <laughs> just, just say, Lord, this is your season. You give me the strength to give up Dr. Pepper. And, and it will be for 40 days if, if that's what God puts on your heart. Third B, be personal and purposeful. This is your journey. It's no, nobody else's business what you give up or what you do something special. I am not going to text you or email you about what you should give up. I may send you some emails uh, about Lenten inspirational quotes or something. But this is your personal journey. Make it personal. Make it, make it you. Make it what God puts on your heart. And put purpose behind it. Don't just, don't just every day, I, I just sacrifice this to you, Lord. Make it purposeful. Put prayer behind it. 
make it an intentional choice. Don't make an emotional thing because, because the pastor is promoting it. Make it personal, purposeful before the Lord, and it will have meaning. It will be very meaningful. But make it you. And the, the fourth thing I want to give you, be real. Be real about you. I might camp on this one a little bit because it really struck me about being real with this thing. Um, I know some people who have shared with me privately that they have, that they at the beginning of the year gave up food for a while to fast. That's cool. That's wonderful. Um, I particularly haven't done that in a long time. Maybe the Lord might call me to do that. Um, I don't want to say this as if you're not going to do this, but probably, there probably won't be, if there is, there might be one, maybe two people who will actually give up food for 40 days for an extended fast. What I mean by being real is be real to you. Take simple steps. If giving up a meal a day or a dessert a day or Twitter or something in your life, be real to you. Don't, don't try to climb the mountain in one shot. Just take some simple steps. So I got a kick out of this for me. Um, I could say, well, I'm going to give up golf in January and February. That isn't real. <laughs> no tests there. <laughs> I, I, told, I told the first service I have a tea time today at 2 o'clock. I'm not sure if it's going to be Lipton tea or whatever, but I do have a tea time. Um, you know, be real. I, I could say, I'm going to give up instant coffee for Lent. Like, that's a big deal. <laughs> be a big deal if I made a vow that I, and I'm not Lord right now if I gave up coffee. But it would be, it would be a, like, give up instant coffee. Like, like, that's a real test of faith or something. <laughs> Anybody here like instant coffee? Didn't want to offend it. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Well, see, there it is, right there. <laughs> um, giving up golf in January, February, and March. Besides, I don't want to box, my, box myself into a corner on that one because I think the weather will turn by faith. <laughs> uh, so make it, my point is, whatever God puts on your heart, I think it's going to be real. It might be challenging. It might be easy for you, that's okay. Just make it real. The last thing I want to share with you is to be prophetic and positive. Now, here's what I mean by being prophetic. You're not trying to predict anything, but at least be prophetic that you look ahead. You look ahead to Easter and you go, I look forward to Lenten season. I look forward to the next 40 days on purpose. I look forward to uh, I will come out of this richer and deeper in Christ. I'm not going to live just day to day. I, I look forward to, I, for the next 40 days, I look forward to being richer, deeper in Christ because I gave up something or I added something in my life. Be prophetic. Be positive. Uh, don't just approach this as, what, as a negative thing. Look at it as a God thing. I just want this in my life. So I want to finish with that old story of pastor and author Paul Thigpen. He wrote in a journal one time that he had just cleaned up their kitchen. And it was immaculate, and he had to be gone for an hour. And I don't know where the wife was in this story, but uh, he was gone for an hour, and his seven-year-old daughter had gone into the kitchen and made a total mess. Eggshells everywhere, flour everywhere, syrup everywhere. And he walked back into the kitchen an hour later, and the place was an absolute mess. And he was, oh, he was livid until he saw a little sticky note, a little sticky note on the kitchen table that his daughter had written. And it said, I'm making something special for you, Dad. And it melted his heart. I'm going to suggest to you that's what Lent is. I'm doing something special for you, Jesus. That's what Lent is in your heart. It's not just a tradition. It's a heartfelt practice that says, I want to do something special for you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you. 
I just want to thank you, Jesus, that you spent 40 days in the wilderness. Some, we always focus on the temptations and how you, how you uh, beat the devil. It was no problem, but you were tempted at, at his game. And we always focus on that and apply that to our lives, but we never focus on just that you fasted for 40 days and you spent time in prayer and you sacrificed that time and you sacrificed uh, being alone and in faith talking uh, with with your dad and <laughs> so Jesus give us the grace give us your power during this season give us what it would be that we would do something special for you that it wouldn't be pretense it wouldn't be a cause for a Facebook post or look what I'm doing it would just be very personal, enriching, and powerful. Thank you that you will speak to us. And, and it will be real. And it will be wonderful. Thank you. In Jesus' name.